Today, New York City joined a growing list of places restricting indoor dining due to a surge in coronavirus cases. Those restrictions announced by Governor Cuomo go into effect Monday, and they limit diners' options to takeout or the great outdoors. As temperatures drop, outdoor dining structures are popping up all over cold weather cities. Restaurants are turning to outdoor tents and igloos so that customers can dine more safely while also allowing restaurants to stay open for business. But restaurant owners say it's not as easy as just grabbing a tent and a heater. There's a lot of confusion about what exactly is allowed and what's safe. Andrew Dimbert has the details. Winter fast approaching and a raging pandemic sweeping the nation. In the restaurant biz, outdoor dining is now an instrument of survival. We realized that we had to make the pivot. Marissa Casey is the CEO of Georgetown Events, a restaurant group in Washington, D.C. with locations throughout the Northeast. With all of their restaurants being based in cold weather cities, like countless others, they're trying to figure out how patrons can dine outside safely and warmly. It's proving to be challenging and at times downright confusing. Eamon Bay Banks co-owns the Due South restaurant in D.C. There's not a clear message. If there had been a clear message from the beginning, then probably everybody would be on the same um, track. For many places that didn't already have outdoor seating before the COVID-19 pandemic, assembling or building them now isn't always so simple. All of a sudden, you can't have heaters if you have sides on your tent. There's just a lot of nuance to the rules. Many in the food and beverage industry tell ABC they're actively trying to keep up with safety protocols, but they say sometimes it feels like there are too many cooks in the kitchen. What has been the most frustrating thing about? I think who, who to look for, like who to look at and who to get answers from. Am I going to be dinged or fined because of something that I didn't even know about? A recent ABC News investigation shows just how COVID-19 can travel from table to table, depending on the type of dining structure you choose. Medical experts say if a patron is infected when breathing and talking, they're releasing viruses into the air that can easily flow in any direction. It has to do with ventilation, the ability of this virus to be able to dissipate in the air. And while dining in those self-contained igloos may isolate you from others, Virginia Tech engineering professor Lindsay Marr explains there's a downside. If you're with someone who happens to be infected, there's really a high potential for virus to build up in the air and for everyone in that little bubble to be exposed. I feel like it's only prudent to go in there with people in your own household or people in your own pod. Also, Mar cautions, make sure there's enough time between seatings, at least 20 minutes, to give the igloo a chance to air out. Her most ideal scenario, dining under the great open sky, because she says that outdoor air dilutes the virus that may be floating in the air, the wind carrying it away in all directions. You still want to follow all the guidelines that you do indoors, meaning that the tables should be far apart, ideally 10 feet between people at the nearest tables. People should be wearing masks when they're not eating. You want to minimize contact with the waiter and practice good hygiene. Even by the book, outdoor dining in bitter cold temps may be a recipe for disaster. We're scared because the winter, the winter's long and it's going to be hard. Restaurants are still trying to make sense of it all on the fly, from tenting regulations to rules on heaters and permitting for construction. There's now even a question of what exactly is outdoor dining. So you've got a mix of, of igloos and tents and different types of heaters and what's the safest and what's going to be the best for you know the continuity of business. A seemingly growing number of restaurant owners and managers say when they're told to follow a set of regulations, oftentimes the regulators change the rules. Even after businesses spend money on outdoor equipment they originally thought was allowed. Now the fear, those costs could fall on employees in the form of pay cuts, furloughs, or downsizing. Or, worse yet, shutter some businesses for good. It's an everyday thought that somebody might come in and be like, you're shut down. Andrew Dimber, ABC News in Washington, D.C. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.